Hey everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin and welcome to my video tutorial for the Ocean Life Mandala Creator. Uh, this is an add-on for Illustrator that'll help you create some mandala designs that are great for coloring books, cards, and anything like that, any kind of fine line illustrations you might need. And uh, in this tutorial, we're going to do just three different designs. Uh, in the first part, we're going to make a five-sided uh, mandala like this one. Uh, in the middle, we're going to make a four-sided kind of a wreath design like this one. And then at the very end of the video, we're going to use the uh, mirror template and just make a two-sided design like this one. So the first thing you want to do to get started is just download the product file. It's going to be a zip file, so just go ahead and unzip it. And inside, you'll find a few folders and a readme. And uh, if you have any trouble with this add-on or any questions or comments, uh, you can find my email address in the readme and just send me a message and I'll get right back to you as soon as possible. So the first mandala we're going to make is going to be a five-sided one, and I can find that in the uh, Templates and Actions folder. So I'll open that one up. And uh, it's this one here, Five-Sided Reflector Template. Uh, make sure you open up the template and not the actions by accident. I'll show you how to open that one up later. So I'm just going to double-click this uh, Illustrator file to open it up. And uh, it looks just like this. I'll zoom in here to get a better look. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just anything you sort of place in this pie slice will get reflected around when you use the action script. So uh, I'll show you how to load that next. Just go to Window and then Actions. And then uh, Illustrator will usually have some default actions loaded. I recommend going to the little menu here and then doing Clear Actions and then do Yes. And then you can load the actions by going to that same menu, Load Actions, uh, and then go back to the folder. Uh, it's in the uh, second one here, Templates and Actions and then load the corresponding five-sided action. So just double check, triple check that you're using the right actions for the right template. So the AI file we have open is this one, the five-sided reflector template. So we need to make sure we load the five-sided actions. So I'll highlight that and click open. And uh, it should look like this, like little buttons. If it doesn't, uh, if it looks like this, uh, make sure you go to that little menu again and then enable button mode. And uh, this will make this a lot easier to use. The next thing we want to do is sort of tweak a little setting in Illustrator. So go to your preferences and we'll just double check uh, that the uh, this one here, the scale strokes in effect is disabled. So if you open up the preferences in the general tab here and you see that is checked, make sure it's unchecked and then uh, click OK. So now I want to load some of the uh, Ocean Life elements and I can do that by going to File and then Open and back to the same folder and the uh, elements are in the first one here. I'll open that one up and it's called 200 Ocean Life Elements. So here's what all the elements look like and uh, I tried to organize them as best as I can but uh, basically your workflow might look something like this. Uh, you'll just grab something here, maybe we'll start with the jellyfish and uh, I'll just copy it and I'll go back to the template and then paste it and uh, you'd go back and forth between the template uh, and the elements and kind of pick things you want place them inside this little pie slice uh, and when you want to see what it might look like just run this last script so I'll click that one and uh, after you run that script it'll copy and rotate your little design around and it'll put the result over here so you can kinda see what it looks like and uh, this will help you because it'll show you sort of gaps uh, in your design and you'll know that well I should place something over here uh, and that and that corresponds to this area or this area so you might put a fish or something uh, delete the result and then run it again. So I'll just go over here and grab a, a fish just for an example. And uh, I'll just run this last script again to see what, see what it looks like. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I got a few more spaces here, but uh, I think you get the idea. I'm just going to fast forward this part and make a, a neat little arrangement and then I'll get back to you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's what I've come up with, and uh, I'll run this script to show you what it looks like. I think uh, that's a pretty cool design. Um, all of these scripts here, they're just shortcuts to normal menu commands, all the ones up here. And uh, you might not use a lot of them, but uh, one I often end up using is uh, this one here, move to front and move to back. And uh, this will help you sort of move your, uh, the kind of the layers in your design really easily. So if I want this fish, for example, to be behind the jellyfish, I can just move it to back. If I want it to be in the front, I can move it to front. 
Uh, that's a really handy one. Another one you might find handy is the duplicate one. If you want more than one instance, you can just select something, run the script, and then you get a copy. Uh, both of those are pretty handy ones. But um, once you're happy with your design here and you run this script, uh, you've got to decide how you want to export this. So maybe you're making a coloring book or a greeting card or something like that, even just a coloring page. I highly recommend you just copy your result and then paste it into a blank document. So I'll select my result here and I'll do Control C or Command C to copy it. And I'll go to File and then New and I'll make a new document about 2,000 pixels square. So I'll make sure my units are in pixels and uh, I'll enter 2,000 here and then make the height 2,000 as well. This is a pretty good size. Uh, color, color mode doesn't matter. RGB is totally fine. And uh, I'll just click uh, Create here to make that document. And uh, I'll do Control V to paste it there. And uh, I can grab the corners and hold Shift and uh, Alt or Option here to kind of scale it up uh, to sort of uh, fit the uh, page here a little bit better. And uh, while it's still selected, you can change the stroke. So I can go up here to Stroke and uh, make the line a little bit thicker. For example, I'll enter a three-point three, three point stroke, and uh, that made it just a little bit bolder. And uh, you just use the normal Save for Web function to export this as an image. Usually, you just go to File, uh, Export, Save for Web, and then maybe uh, JPEG or PNG is fine. Just make sure that the size is correct for your project, and uh, make sure the quality is pretty high. I'd say don't make the quality less than 50%. Uh, Anywhere between 50 and 80% is totally fine. And then uh, you just save it to your desktop and then insert this image uh, into your project, whether it's a coloring book or a card or anything like that. And uh, I'll show you uh, in the next part of this tutorial how to use the four-sided template uh, to create that kind of a uh, wreath design. So next I'm going to show you how to change templates. Uh, so we're in the five-sided one and we've got the five-sided uh, actions loaded. So first I'm going to clear the five-sided actions. I'll clear those just like that and click yes and then I'm gonna close this document the uh, five-sided template here and I won't save it and uh, I'm gonna go grab the four-sided template by going to file and then open and uh, again go back to the folder you unzipped it's the uh, second one here templates and actions and I'll just grab the four-sided reflector template and uh, open it and uh, just like before I'm gonna go to the actions panel and load the uh, corresponding four-sided actions by going to uh, load actions here and the four-sided ones are right here, foursidedactions.aia, and I'll open that one. And button mode's already enabled. It remembers that from last time, so you won't have to do that again. And uh, just like before, I'm going to sort of fast forward this, but I'm just going to go back and forth uh, between the ocean life elements and the template and create a little arrangement here, and then uh, I'll get back to you and uh, show you what it looks like. So uh, here's what I've come up with, and uh, you might have noticed on the four-sided reflector script, as, uh, as well as some of the other scripts, um, you have two options at the bottom, whereas uh, in the last template, the five-sided one, we only had one option. And uh, this other option is called copy and reflect, and uh, instead of just copying and rotating, it also copies and then flips the design like around. So uh, you'll see it here. The uh, fish will sort of face each other if I use the reflect one. There, so you can see it kind of mirrors it four times. Uh, but if I run the other one, copy and rotate, it does the same thing more or less uh, as the one in the five-sided uh, template. And uh, there we go. I'm pretty happy with this, this design. And uh, I'm going to export it exactly the same way as I did before. I'll just copy it and paste it into a blank document, you know, maybe 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels, and then save it from there using the Save for Web dialog as a JPEG or as a PNG. So in the next part of the tutorial, the last part here, I'm going to show you how to use the two-sided template, and uh, I'll skip ahead to that. So I've got the two-sided template loaded up with the uh, two-sided actions, and uh, in this last part of the tutorial, I also want to show you how to use the brushes. Uh, there, it's 20 or so brushes that I included with this uh, kit here, and you can uh, load those by going to Window, and then go to the uh, Brushes panel. And uh, if you go to the corner there, the little menu there, it'll give you the option to open brush library, and then you can go to other library, and just navigate back to the folder you unzipped, and the, uh, the brushes are in the first folder here, and uh, it's this one here, Ocean Life Brushes. So I'll click that, and then open it up, and all of these brushes will kind of appear here, 
And uh, it also kind of will hide the action script sometimes. So I'll drag that over here so we can use the action scripts and the brushes at the same time. Okay, so to use the brushes, you want to go over here to the uh, tools menu here and grab the brush tool. And uh, make sure that the fill color is set to no fill. And then the stroke is set to just a normal black stroke. And uh, if you draw something here on the artboard, uh, it'll create a line. And then you can use the black arrow selection tool. You can select that line and then select any one of these uh, patterns here and it will sort of stretch it along that line. And you got bubbles and different seaweed, uh, different stuff like that. And uh, this is just an easy way to create some kind of freestyle elements. So I will add a few more pieces here to this design. So if I wanna change the pattern, all these uh, brush strokes are still live. So I can select them and uh, select something else, something like that. It's a little bit small, so I'll go to the uh, stroke up here and uh, increase it to a two-point stroke, make it a little bit thicker. And uh, you'll notice when I do that, it makes the line a bit thicker. But uh, I have this action down here. It's called Expand Brushes, and it'll solve that problem. But the downside is once you run this script, you won't be able to change these to a different pattern anymore. But uh, I'm happy with this uh, arrangement here. Maybe I'll just make that one a bit taller. So I'll run this Expand Brushes uh, action. Just click it once and uh, it expands the brushes and then selects all of them. So in this case, since I have two different line thickness, like a skinny line and a thick line, I just want to kind of equalize that. So I'll go to the stroke and it'll be blank, but I'll just enter a one and then I'll press enter. And uh, now you can see everything has the same stroke. And now just like before, I'll fast forward this part, but I'll create a little arrangement here and uh, I'll get back to you at the end and show you what it looks like when I run the uh, copy and reflect script. So uh, here's what I've created here, and uh, it looks like this when I run the script. And uh, it's got this little space in the middle, and uh, I want to put this anchor just kind of like that. I think that kind of fills it out. And uh, the end result here, it gets grouped, basically. Uh, so this anchor will be separate. So if you want all of this to move together, you can just select the uh, little arrangement here along with the anchor, and just go to Object, and then Group. And uh, now when you move it around, it'll kind of behave like one piece. And uh, exporting this is the same as the other ones, just paste it in a new document, a blank Illustrator document, and uh, just export it from there as a JPEG or a PNG. Then you can use that to sort of include in your coloring book PDF or use however you need to in your project. So hopefully this is a pretty good overview about how you can use this uh, add-on here. If you have any questions or comments, you can just leave a comment on this video or send me an email and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. But uh, other than that, guys, Thanks for your support and thanks for watching.